Hello, and welcome to another dazzling episode of We Only Look Thin. I am... (laughs) You should see the look on Catherine's face right now. (laughs) Anyway. Oh my gosh, the faces he makes when he's going, Look Thin! (laughs) Pops up like a jack-in-the-box. Uh, this... yes. Have you ever seen those videos of babies, like, like reacting to jack-in-the-boxes? They're with terror. With terror. <laughs> That's like kind so, of like Some of I them have... with terror. I was a baby terror. If only someone was taking a video. Yeah. This is We Only Look Thin. This is Donald Weigel. He's lost 100 American pounds. No, I am Donald Weigel. You're not Donald Weigel. I was pointing at you, though. But the <laughs> audience can't see who you're pointing at. So why don't you point at... Okay, Donald's <laughs> going to point at me and then tell me who I am. This is Catherine Weigel. <laughs> What have I done? (laughs) You've lost 150 pounds. I have. Yeah. It's inspiring. I'm doing jazz hands right now because one of our fine listeners imagined that when we said we were inspiration, we did jazz hands. So I'm doing jazz hands. Jazz hands or spirit fingers? I'm not sure. Here. Jazz hands is when your fingers like move with your hands. Okay. And so then listen to us fingers. do it, people, and then let us know what you think we're doing. Yeah, are we doing jazz are we hands doing or hands? Spirit, spirit fingers? fingers. Like, Let's we want to hear both. from you. Can can you, like, rub your belly and pat your head at the same time? I can. And then spirit fingers one hand and jazz hand your... Oh, I can't Whoa, do it! Whoa! I'm not sure I can spirit fingers with one hand and jazz hands with the other hand. No, that's... No, I think that's impossible. So, uh, I think we've just proven that it's impossible. This is a podcast, which means no one can see us right now. I they am can only Donald Weigel, <laughs> one of your hosts. Let's just let's just reset. And I'm and... Catherine Weigel. And I'm going to ask Donald, and we're going to start with a quote, but first I'm going to ask Donald, Donald, what would you say are among the, the like, universally recognized, maybe top, maybe just list two of the top films of Amer- of the American canon of, of films? Like, just, just a couple, like, some that people would just say, like, that is a classic. Meet the Deedles. Meet the Deedles, <laughs> and <laughs> you're ruining my joke. <laughs> Sorry. Go uh, serious. Um, uh, Citizen Kane. Yes. The Godfather. Yes. Um, uh, Gone with the Wind. Wizard of Oz. Wizard of Oz. I'm going to quote one of the others, the the unsung uh, hero movies, to start us off today. On I'm our looking topic, forward to this. Better Off Dead. Oh, st- starring Joan Cusack's brother Johnny. Oh, Joan Cusack has a brother named John. Johnny. Wow. Johnny Cusack. John Cusack was in a movie called Better Off Dead, which is maybe one of the best films ever. It's uh, pretty amazing. Watched it recently. And today we are going to talk about being flexible with uh, our methods but not with our goals and that that ties me to my very inspirational quote i can't wait to be inspired by it john cusack is on top of uh, this giant ski slope the k-12 uh and he is trying to win back the love of his uh, girlfriend who has (laughs) dated somebody else and he he is terrified to go down the k-12 because he has crashed before and it has not ended well i think i know where you're going have you crashed before emotionally i have emotionally crashed before are you trying to win back your girlfriend who no never mind okay no, so i'm so trying Wayne, to win back my weight loss methods. exactly okay so imagine the k-12 is doritos right and <laughs> oh a mountain full a mountain of, of doritos okay so a he's at the doritos. top with his best friend right and he doesn't know what to do and he has to go down this perilous uh mountainside and so he asks on his, skis on skis for those so, who haven't seen yeah. it it's about um, skiing Skis are like uh, snowboards, but with one on each foot. Right. Um, and his friend says, and this is the quote, I'm getting to it. Mm. Build up jazz hands. Yeah. His friend says, go that way really fast. If something gets in your way, turn. <laughs> <laughs> Boom! That is great advice on or off the slopes. That is. And uh, so that is my advice today, not to put the end of the podcast at the beginning. But today we are going to talk about the K-12. And the K-12 is our journeys to weight loss. The K-12 of life. You and there's going to be you moguls. You have to ski the K-12 of and life. And black diamonds. Whoa. I don't ski, so I don't... What other ski I don't things know. do you know? Powder? Powder. There's powder. <laughs> there's black, jumps. Is there black ice, there's or is peekaboo. that only driving? No, I think there's black ice. Anyway, but we're talking about... Um, we have goals. Do you have goals? I do have goals. I'm still stuck on trying to think of more skiing terms. That's <laughs> fine. It's fine. I think Yeti is a ski term. <laughs> mm, yes. Um, or no, spaghetti. One of those delicious um, bowling. Mountain of spaghetti. Yeah, mountain of spaghetti. On top of spaghetti. spaghetti. <laughs> okay, this yeah. is getting really bad. So, uh, we have lost 150 pounds. I have lost 150 pounds. Donald has lost 100 pounds. This is not our first rodeo. No. Uh, I have lost weight before, 
and uh, I thought it was forever. And now, uh, as you heard from our last episode, I do not think it is forever. It is a horror movie, and I keep on having to fight for my life every day. And um, so today we're going to talk about uh, being flexible with the method, but not with the end goal. There's lots of ways to get down the K-12 of weight loss. Yes, Um, lots of ways to go really fast and turn when something gets in your way. But I think, as we said in the Gravity Issue uh, episode... Life isn't going to line up perfectly for your weight loss goals. And there are going to be uh, weight loss methods that work perfectly and amazingly until they don't. Uh, I'll take you back, if we will, to my time doing Atkins. (laughs) It went fantastically. The year was 2003, and I don't know who top the charts no, <laughs> um, i know nothing I, about i'm lucky if i remember who was president in dude i have no idea i think it was carter um so <laughs> at the time i was doing atkins and i read the book and i followed every detail i was the perfect student of atkins it said cut out coffee i cut out coffee I, it said cut out sugar like in every way and i knew people who were doing like weekday Atkins and then weekend off. And I, for one year, did it to the letter to fantastic success. I went from 300 pounds down to about 200 pounds in a year. Wow. And then on one foggy night, Mm. I had a bit of a run-in with a carrot cake. Ah, yes, as carrot cakes will often run in. (laughs) I couldn't help myself. It jumped in my mouth. You were driving down the... I was saving it from an orphanage on fire. You were driving down the Atkins Highway, and a carrot cake jumped in front of your vehicle. Like a moose. And the only thing you could do was allow it to fall into your mouth. Into my mouth. Yeah. Um, So I am sure people uh, who are listening in our audience right now have said to themselves, that diet was fantastic. Uh, Atkins was fantastic, except for the part where I gained back... Uh, I lost more weight, and then I gained back like 50 or 60 pounds, and it was not sustainable. Um, And so I gave up. Like, I stopped losing weight because the plan wasn't working. Is giving up a plan? No. Well, it's It's a plan to fail, maybe. It's a plan to fail. Yeah. Um, And our lives are not these perfect... uh, little capsules like biodomes of perfect weather perfect life circumstances and frankly things get boring after a while donald if you ate broccoli every day would you get tired of it after a while i would get tired of it after a while in fact i'm in a bit of a tired of broccoli phase right now i was eating broccoli nearly every day for a long time and have pretty much stopped eating it altogether now so have you given up on your weight loss goals? No, I'm still doing them. So tell us more about that. What, how, how do uh, changing, like you have a goal. Yes. Is one method the way to get it done? No, and I think that that's where a lot of people get hung up. I think that um, people believe that keto or Atkins is the only way to do it, or they think that, um, you know, paleo is the only way to go, or, um, you know, counting your macros, or your proteins or, um, you know, Weight Watchers, fasting, Intermittent weight Fasting, watchers, yeah, whatever, Jenny I don't know, Craig. I could just keep naming diets, I'm sure everyone's excited for me to just keep naming Name and diets. diets. Um, you know, for me, it's counting calories and, and trying to exercise as much as I can, and mostly in the form of walking, and, um, but really, um, I've had to be flexible in that. When I first got my diabetes diagnosis, I, um, I cut out sugar altogether. I cut out flour. I cut out, you know, I I wasn't really doing Atkins or keto as such, but you know, my doctor said I should really stay away from all of those types of things. Anything that was going to spike with sugar. Did that put you in a good mood? No, no, it did not. (laughs) Did you fall into a little rage spiral uh, thinking your life was basically over? If you can fall into a little rage spiral, (laughs) then yes, that's what I did. Um, You might have described me as a grumpy Gus. I might have. (laughs) Yes, Yes, you might have. I probably did. If we go back to my journals, I think we can see that grumpy Gus. Grumpy Gus is mentioned. I like strong language. Several times. Strong coffee, strong language. Um, You know, but. And he felt like it was forever. Like he felt like it was over and forever. But what did your wise wife tell you? (laughs) 
<laughs> my wise wife. Your wise wife. My wife. My wise wife told me that um, maybe it was just for now. I said simmer down. I said, oh, Let's you just said look. simmer down. I don't know what I said. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what. I, I don't I'm even remember what I said now. like two seconds ago. No, but I, you know, when you're in the middle of something, it seems like it has to be forever. And it is not necessarily forever. You know, so I think that um, we all get stuck into these ideas that you have to do these things. And, you know, I ended up losing uh, 100 pounds. Um, and when I got down something like 75, 80 pounds, I, I was a little frightened of doing it. Um, but I knew that I could not live without sugar and bread, etc. forever. And so I gently uh, worked those things back in. And now I'm you know, I, I've maintained my weight loss, but I'm eating differently than I was along a lot of the way. Well, and your diabetes uh, numbers have gone yes, down. Exactly. And so at the time, it was critical for him to eliminate that. And I know that there are, you know, there are people who are on this path because they just want to lose weight and avoid diagnosis like, diagnoses like Don received. Um, and then there are medically forced, like, change your life or your leg's going to fall off, which he decided to give up the sugar <laughs> so that he wouldn't lose a leg, which is pretty awesome. But it can seem uh, like the whatever you're on is never going to end. And if, and if for some reason it does and it stops working, like my uh, interlude with uh, the carrot cake, when I dropped Atkins and jumped into carrot cake like suddenly I had zero resolve the idea of going back on Atkins was just like for a year I felt invincible and then suddenly I was like if I have to eat one more block of cheddar cheese I'm gonna barf and so I gave up and the the real answer in all of this is that you can just pick another method and try something else. And you might try 10 something else's before you find something that actually works for you. And that is okay because giving up is a really great way to not hit your goals. Yeah, for sure. And I think that, that we, and I will own it. I, um, get into these mindsets where I think there's only one way to do something. And if I can't stick to it, then I'm not going to do it at all. And I'm not going to do anything. And that will get me where? Uh, nowhere, no, nowhere is the answer. <laughs> to the big and tall store. <laughs> yes, to the big and tall store. Well, in my case, the big and short store. Yeah, um, which there actually is one nearby. And <laughs> it's really expensive. Like there was a shirt there for like yeah, $200. Yeah. Unless it's made of dollar bills. It Unless it worth... gives me a massage while I wear it, I'm not paying $200 for a shirt. But, you know, I spent, and I've, I've said this before, but I spent 20 years failing my way up the scale. The first time I joined Weight Watchers, I was 200 pounds. I would last six weeks on the program, be eye of the tiger to you people from the 80s. And then I would have, uh, you know, a birthday come up or a work event and I would splurge and I would go over and I would be up on the scale a little bit. And so then I would quit because I was embarrassed to go back to the Weight Watchers meeting and weigh in because I didn't want them to know that I'd gained back five pounds out of the 20 I'd lost. And as revenge, I would stack on another 15 pounds before I finally said, okay, now I need to go back to Weight Watchers. So I did that time and time again, quitting my way up the scale up to 300 pounds that is not an effective weight loss method. No, and um, it, it's, you know, the the main point here is that there are plans that are going to work for a little while. There are plans that aren't going to work at all. and But you don't give up, and you keep trying until you find something that sticks. Um, I've done lots and lots of things. I've done Weight Watchers. I've done the Atkins thing. I've I've uh, I've done shake meal shake, <laughs> working out with a trainer over and over. I've I've tried lots of things, and what turned out worked for me was you know walking a lot because I like doing it and I can keep doing it, and counting calories because I I can do it at a level where I don't feel completely deprived and I can still eat roughly whatever I want. Um, you know. I can't I can't eat as much as I want all the time every day, but I feel like this is a plan I can do forever and I have done it for a good while now and I think that I can keep doing it. But I, you know, there was a time I thought the only way I could lose weight was to be 
on Atkins. The only way that I could lose weight was to do Weight Watchers. And there were different times in my life I was 100% convinced that was the only way that I could do it. Well, and I think, too, in terms of our maturity, can we call it maturity? When I was... We are definitely not mature. Mature. No, I'm definitely (laughs) not mature. I am am not. But, you know, when... If we have any younger listeners, any millennials out there... um, it's all fun and games when you're in your 20s. You're getting, uh, you know, in shape or you want to go down a dress size before a wedding. And so you do something sort of short term that you know is short term. And there are uh, weight loss plans out there that are meant for sh- short term burst loss. I mean, I got an email the other day that was like burn, you know, 10 to 14 pounds <laughs> in, you know, one weird trick. And Sherman Oaks doctors Sherman are angry Oaks doctors about- are angry about about this this weight loss method yeah and um you know i think that when one gets older i i hope the wis the wisdom that i have now is going to keep me on this weight loss track but when i started doing this in january of 2016 i was counting calories and i was eating not great food. I just knew I had to do something and track. So I might have had, you know, cereal for breakfast and, you know, um, a grilled cheese sandwich for lunch and, you know, uh, chips and a frozen meal for dinner. And that's where I was. Like at the time, that's what I could manage. And other people, like Don had said, one of his sisters does like Sunday meal prep. I said to myself, I would never do that. That is impossible. And at the time, that was my truth. And it's okay to not be whatever you see Pinterest worthy or Instagram worthy. Starting where you are, I was eating frozen food. And if that's where you are, and if that's what you need to do to get yourself started, that's okay. You can change as you get more comfortable with your plan. And um, so nothing is static. Nothing about the last two years, three years has been static for me. Well, and hey, we are recording this on a Sunday. And what did we finish doing before we did this? Meal prep. Sunday meal meal prep. Meal prep. Let's say it at the same time. One, two, three. Meal Meal prep. Um, um, and you know, it's great. We've changed our lifestyle to fit our circumstance. You know, we, we got rid of the idea that we could never do it. And another thing to keep in mind, you know, I keep saying it over and over again, but the way I lost a hundred pounds was to count calories. I figured out how many calories I, I had to stay under in order to lose weight and I had to move more. But within that, I've had to change multiple times based on my circumstances, um, a couple of years ago, I, I work on mainly, mainly TV shows um, in production. A couple of years ago, I had a TV job where I was on set all the time, and I was able to work getting steps into my job. I was doing it a lot. Um, I, I made excuses to walk places, and instead of taking a van or, or whatever someplace, I would walk there. Or I would, you know, instead of calling people, I would actually walk and talk to them. And um, I was able to get in a lot. And then I, you know, that TV show ended and I started a new project and I had to adjust to that. And so I had to find, you know, I was primarily at a desk and I had to find ways to, um, to work in more steps. And I was able to do that by, you know, getting up early and doing walks before work. Um, I started walking up the stairs. I was in a tall building walking up and down the stairs whenever I would have five minutes and making excuses, you know, offering to go get the producer Starbucks, which was a walk that I had to go to and things like that in order to get steps in. Then I got my current job and I am working way more hours than I was before. And I've had difficulty squeezing in steps there. So I've had to come up with, you know, even different ways. Um, Again, finding excuses to walk places when, when I could take a golf cart or something. Um, You know, doing some walks after work, parking on the fourth floor of the parking garage so that I have to walk up farther. Well, and two, with Donald's change in his routine, it also changes my routine because um, we would go for 8,000 step walks in the morning. And not doing that together, it changed my uh, activity level, which then reduced uh, my calorie burn for the day. And I had been consistently losing tracking calories at a certain deficit. But it turns out with less activity, less calorie burn, I had to adjust how many calories I was getting to lose. And it was, it felt unfair, but 
it's just math. And, you know, I in the past, I would have just given up. I would have said like, oh, well, Donald's working a lot now. So, you know, let's just do it when, when a season is more conducive to it. And being flexible, knowing the times in your life where you can uh, be at your best and have those perfect, uh, you know, for some people it might be summer. You have the perfect summer. You have time to meal prep. The kids are out of school. Um, you can go to the farmer's market and like, I don't know, make your own goat cheese or whatever it is people do. Like my meal prep today was bagged uh, Trader Joe's carrots that were already peeled. I just had to throw them on a sheet. Um, you know, bagged lettuce that was pre-washed. So when I say meal prep... You roasted it, those carrots, I by the roasted way. them up. Yeah. I didn't just put them in a... And I don't even... I traditionally like cooked carrots, but they looked awfully good. But like meal prep doesn't have to be, you know, what you see on Pinterest. Doing it at your own speed. I know Kate, in the last episode we did with her, um, she talked about frozen broccoli and roasting it in the oven. And like realizing that you don't have to be this perfect person doing whatever you imagine perfect meal prep is or the perfect exercise. Sometimes you're not going to be able to go to yoga. Sometimes you're not going to be able to afford a gym membership or whatever perfect plan you think is there. You'll have to do the MacGyver thing where you just work with the circumstances that you're in today and and don't be angry that you can't do your perfect plan. And if you're the kind of person who thinks to themselves, oh, I, I can't possibly, you know, I can't possibly prepare broccoli or cauliflower or, you know, watermelon or strawberries or whatever. It's just too much work. Uh, apples, like they sell pre-washed, cut, all of that <laughs> at the store. And you just put it in your mouth or you pop it in the microwave for two minutes and it's ready to go. Yeah. And there's no, you know, um, health police that are going to come and scold you for buying pre-washed, pre-bagged, whatever. Like living within your means, doing what you can with what you have. And that means being um, proactive. I mean, I know I've been stuck a couple of times and it's something I'm still working on where, um, for example, I was sick uh, in February for a couple of days. And I hadn't been sick in, in maybe t two years, but I was like sick, sick, couldn't get out of bed. And I didn't have really any like frozen meals on hand just to eat out of desperation or anything. And so I ended up just eating like Pringles and <laughs> just to get my way out of it. And it, in the moment, it felt like all I could do and it felt gross and terrible, but I didn't plan in advance. And like now, I was at work, by the way. I work. didn't. I wasn't just sitting in the other room laughing while she had no food to eat. Uh, uh, uh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, but like I put myself in a position where I didn't have any instant meals on hand to have in an emergency, and so since then I have, you know, now I've got maybe four or five instant meals that I can go to. And is it the perfect plan? No. Are they maybe higher in calories based on the gram, whatever? Donald's E equals MC squared gram to gram yeah, ratio one, thing. One gram per calorie is is what I shoot for, or better. Yeah, like a lot of fruit is is well under one gram. So like per a calorie. you know a frozen shepherd's pie for three hundred calories. Okay, maybe it's not a lot of bang for my buck, but I can press a couple of numbers on the microwave and have you know a hot dinner in a little you know in three minutes. And so being okay with dealing with the circumstances you're in, but also not, you know, if, if you think right now that intermittent fasting is the way to go, like it is perfect for you, you feel in control and you feel focused, and then something happens where you're not able to follow that plan or you just get tired of it, find something else, have something else in your back pocket to go, you know what, this isn't working for me right now. I'm going to go back to Weight Watchers. And because it's boring. I mean, I'm in maintenance right now and, you know, I'm up and down the scale a little bit and I've been doing, um, you know, calorie counting, which has worked for me. And then I had to reduce my calories because I weigh less and I'm not as active. Um, but finding parts of other plans that work and kind of putting together a, a patchwork, uh, sort of a, a universalist church method that works for you. If kind of doing a Weight Watchers thing plus intermittent fasting, but kind of with the keto twist works for you, that's okay. <laughs> and like, but it's about being creative. And like, I was up on the scale a little bit and, 
doing the calorie counting, but feeling unfocused. And uh, my friend Cindy, hello Cindy, uh, talked about tracking her days uh, on a calendar, how many days she stayed at deficit and how many she was off, she was uh, overeating. And I started doing that and it really made me realize how many days I was overeating. And for like a month that worked and it was really motivating and I was down on the scale. And then it was not motivating. I didn't want to see like the happy faces and sad faces. So I don't even know if I told you this, Donald, but I decided not calling it intermittent fasting, but I do my best eating, my most effective uh, eating at uh, after the sun goes down. And if I, you know, we get up at 4.45 in the morning and I start eating at 8, there are not many calories left in the budget for my evening activities. Yeah. So I have been going over my calorie goal. So five days ago, I was in another group and they talked about, they were talking about intermittent fasting. And that's not something I self-identify as, but I decided to kind of do what you do, which is not eat until afternoon. And so I have coffee in the morning and I have tea. And for the last five days, I haven't eaten until afternoon. And I have a little app that tracks like when I'm doing it and when I'm on and when I'm off. And right now it's really motivating me. And if it helps me get on track right now and is working for me, I'm going to go with it at some point in three weeks. It might not work, but right now it's what I need to get through. I'm I'm sort of hybriding, I'm calorie counting and doing this, you know, waiting to eat thing. So whatever you call it, it is just working for me. So finding that combination of things that work for you. Um, it's not like, oh gosh, this is so sad. At Weight Watchers, a million years ago, this woman like stood up and was like, do I have to pay if I want extra points to oh, eat? And it was the just saddest. just breaks my heart. Like she thought she had to pay for the points that she was getting and she obviously didn't get the point, but it's like, you know, if Weight Watchers, if you're hungry on Weight Watchers, eat more points. Like you can do that. The Weight Watcher police are not going to come and get you. And if you are, you know, Whole30 is not a weight loss method, but um, if you're doing Atkins or keto or whatever, and it's not working for you, figure out a way to make whatever hybrid plan will work for you. Like, there are, I mean, maybe there are, you know, vegan police and keto police that I don't know about, but like, <laughs> but just make it work. Like if Saturday night, you know, cupcakes with the family is important to you, work it into your plan. It's all about just eating at a deficit, whatever plan you're doing. And it's okay to make something, uh, a Frankenstein's monster of plans that, uh, that work for you and modify it as you go. And experimenting within your own plan. I mean, I, Catherine was just talking about how I don't eat before one o'clock every day. And um, I, I've been doing that for a long time, but it was based on experimenting. You know, I was counting calories, but I find that I'm hungriest at night and I have the least amount of hunger in the morning and I have the most willpower in the morning and it slowly fades throughout the day. So that's an actual thing that happens if, to many people. If I have, um, if I, I found through experimenting that if I eat a healthy breakfast that, you know, is what we're told since we're, you know, shot out of the womb. Gross. <laughs> Pictures of that will be on our Instagram feed. <laughs> um, never. Never. That we are, uh, you know, supposed to eat a healthy breakfast. If I was doing that, I, I felt like I was, you know, there were all these calories that were going, and then I was hungry by lunchtime, and then by the time I really needed the calories, quote unquote, I didn't have any left, and I was suffering. So I decided to try and eat more later. And also within this plan, you know, I keep changing it all the time. Like the basic structure is the same. The the calories I'm trying to hit are the same. But I I will go to the grocery store periodically and look around with a fresh eye. I will try and look for things. Just that, one eye. He puts a patch one, over the other. One <laughs> fresh eye. It's the pirate method of grocery shopping. And I, I try and find products that I might like that I wouldn't ordinarily, that, I, that I'm not already purchasing, that I hadn't even necessarily heard of or thought of that have, um, that have you know, good calories. I, like I said a little bit ago, I try and aim for things that are roughly one calorie or less per gram. And um, it, 
it works out great. I, I add new things to my to my rotation, and it keeps me from getting bored. And you know, and new foods kind of seem like a treat. Yeah. Well, and two, you know, even if they're low calorie, they seem like a treat because they're new and different. Our local grocery store was built maybe two or three years ago. Um, it's Super Deluxo, and recently they did a remodel and i was so mad because i was like i know where everything is and now it's moved and i don't know where the grapes are now like gosh darn it you moved my grapes and i stumbled upon uh products that i didn't know were in the grocery store because i was used to going to the one location where i knew they had um you know the seltzer water that i get and I happened to find a cola flavored seltzer water and I never would have even noticed it if they hadn't moved everything around. So whether you're going in with a single pirate eye into your favorite grocery store or you just go to a different uh, location of the grocery store with a different layout, you might be able to find new sips or uh, dips, sauces, uh, or sips, sips. And uh, that co- cola flavored uh, seltzer water is pretty great. I'm actually sipping it now. Not as I, <laughs> I was about to say as we speak. He's but, a ventriloquist. He's yeah. going to do it right now while I'm talking. They have a root beer flavor and a uh, Dr. Pepper flavor, which they call the hint of the doctor. Yeah, it's at Kroger or Ralph. So if anybody uh, has Kroger's or Ralph's, uh, they, they have their own products. But trying new things. But and if you don't no like calories, it. No calories, no sweeteners. If you don't like it, just throw it away or take it to work and p- pawn it off on those bronies. <laughs> the point is, you know, to be flexible while still trying to achieve the goal of your goal. The goal goal. The goal of your goal. And, you know, we've said it before, but we don't live in vacuums where we're able to follow our goals all the time and whether you're away at a work conference or you have family in town or there's an unexpected uh you know dinner out with friends um deciding in advance what you can do to control the situation like i know that carrot cake actually if there was footage you would see it jumping into my mouth uh, without my permission but like just tell them not to bring the bed bread basket to uh to the table or whatever you're going to do, just eat half of what you're going to get or, you know, ask them to put it in a a to-go bag, half of it before you even eat any of it and then just throw it away. Um, uh, because you can be a victim of your circumstances. Um, you can give up on Weight Watchers. You can give up because of your work conference, uh, the free Costco samples, you know, that you couldn't help it. Or you can just make statements. I'm not the kind of person that eats Costco samples. I am not the kind of person that eats, you know, the janky bread at, you know, the buffet table. Um, if you go out in advance with at least a little bit of a plan, it might not work out perfectly, but at least you're practicing a presence of mind uh, and not being a victim. And, you know, and then there's there are great days. I have great days and then I have really terrible days. Yeah. And, and you know, don't throw away all of your progress because of one terrible day. You, you've, you know, part of being flexible to achieve your goal is also be flexible in the fact that life happens and things are going to come along. And, you know, you're going to fail sometimes and you're going to succeed sometimes. And it doesn't make you a good person or a bad person. It doesn't mean that your your plan is bad. It just means that you need to move on and uh, keep going. Well, and I, you know, I saw this invisible line at age 40 as I was hurtling toward it like a carrot cake toward my face. Uh, <laughs> that there was this threshold, you know, this finish line with a single N. Is it a single N or a double N? Single N. Single N. Uh, that, you know, if I didn't reach my goal by 40, it was over. And it never occurred to me that at age 41, I would finally find the support network that I needed, the insights that I needed to be successful. And being curious, looking for resources, using something called the Google to look up, you know, uh, new methods or new resources or people with blogs or podcasts like this one mm. that present different ideas. Uh, on a final note, there was, I think I said this before, but there was a woman in uh, my Half Size Me group who lost 100 pounds on Weight Watchers. And I think she went over her point goal by 10 to 15 points every day and lost weight. And it never occurred to me to just 
not listen to what the computer says and do what works for me. And she lost slowly, but she did an amazing job. And it's revolutionary because people feel like, you know, you have to pay for an extra point or something like that. And she made it work for her. And it it inspired me to be flexible with my methods because maybe calories aren't gonna work for me forever. Maybe I'm going to go to intuitive eating. Right now I would intuitive, intuitively eat all the things. So that's not gonna work for me right now. Yes, but be, me o- too. be okay with the possibility of change and ride the uh, the K-12 as far as you go until something gets in your way and then you turn. Then you turn. I'm wondering if uh, if you had been able to listen to this podcast, if you had would have lost the weight even sooner. Maybe. <laughs> Some sort of time travel thing. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, and all of this unfolds over time. The more you hear a message, the more it sinks in and... I know for me, listening to inspirational podcasts... That's a subtle way to get to tell people to listen to more of our podcasts. No, but it's true. I mean, the more people you hear, you know, sending a certain message, uh, you know, the I think the more it sinks in and the more you see that it's possible. And for those people who tell you there's only one way to do this or their plan is the way, it's the way for them. If I had to, you know, if someone told me I could lose 100 pounds just eating okra... No, thank you. Yeah, no, that's not a way I want to live. Not brought to you by the Okra Council of America. But um, being okay with taking bits from other people's plans, making something a hybrid Voltron version of your own plan to get down the K-12. That's what we're suggesting you do. So have you ever used more than one method to lose weight? Yeah, we would love to hear from you. What do you do uh, in terms of flexibility? How do you uh, how do you maintain flexibility but still keep your eye on your goal? Uh, you can reach us at, on our Facebook page. Uh, we Only Look Thin. You can find us on Facebook. Um, we have, uh, you can email us at uh, to weonlylookthin at gmail.com. Uh, you can tweet at us at We Only Look Thin. You can Instagram us. Instagram us is that a thing? Can you Instagram someone? I think so. It's a verb, right? You Instagram someone. I don't know. PM someone. Uh, you can comment but on an Instagram. Let us photo. know what you're doing. Has flexibility worked for you? Is it sustainable? Um, do you think that you have been short sighted and now we have opened your mind to new possibilities? <laughs> let us know because um, and please uh, take a moment if you wouldn't mind to rate and review us on iTunes. That really helps us out. Yeah, so thank you very much for being inspiring today, Donald. Oh, thank you for being inspiring. Strap on those uh, skis and put on those ski goggles and mogul down the hill to inspiration. Asian. The information that you hear on this podcast is for informational purposes only. The hosts are not medical professionals. You should always consult with your doctor, nurse, or other certified health professional before beginning any diet or fitness program.